Tretinoin is a, a marvelous drug for bad acne. We're all very familiar with it and, and familiar with its common side effects. There's an uncommon adverse event that can be a very big problem that many docs aren't aware of, and that is the triggering of acne fulminans, or at least an acne fulminans-like problem. Uh, the real spontaneous acne fulminans has fever, joint pains, and eruptive, ulcerative, horrifying acne lesions on the face and trunk. The isotretinoin-induced one has just the horrible scarring lesions, uh, no joint pains and no fever, but is plenty bad enough. When it happens, sometimes the, um, the doc's reaction is to begin to raise the isotretinoin dose, figuring that more is better. That's actually a backwards uh, way to treat it. What you need to do is lower the dose because the drug is actually triggering it and add prednisone. Um, you can, to a degree, predict who is at risk to get an isotretinoin-induced flare of acne fulminans. And those are the people with the worst inflammatory disease, particularly those on the trunk. People with uh, significantly uh, large trunk papules or even nodules are the ones that you really have to watch out for. In them, they should be started low, say 20 milligrams a day of isotretinoin, and probably along with prednisone. Some doctors wait for it to flare up and, and treat with uh, strong topical corticosteroids like clobetazole. Uh, I prefer to prevent it and find that most patients after a month on 20 of prednisone and 20 of isotretinoin do great and then can have the uh, prednisone tapered away and the isotretinoin snuck up uh, to higher and higher dosages. Occasionally there's a patient who you can't taper after a month. In them, you just have to be calm and patient and slowly t take the uh, prednisone away over many months and raise the isotretinoin. Uh, in the end, I've had nobody who can't be managed through this sort of problem.